Hello, my name is Dr. Phil Boyle, and I want to give you a brief presentation about a publication that we've just had released today, the 22nd of June, 2022. And it is a successful pregnancy, uh, if you can read it there, uh, just about, but a successful pregnancy with restorative reproductive medicine after 16 years of infertility, three recurrent miscarriages, and eight unsuccessful embryo transfers with IVF and ICSI. I just want to outline very briefly for you uh, what did we do uh, in order to help a couple with such a difficult situation. So I've pulled together a brief PowerPoint presentation and I'll try and keep it as brief and simple as I can. And I'll just go straight to the presentation and hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully this will make sense. So our slideshow. So here we go. So I'm the president of the International Institute for Restorative Reproductive Medicine, and I am the co-owner and developer of the Chart Neo Fertility app, which I present in this talk. Restorative reproductive medicine is any medical or surgical treatment that treats subfertility combined with fertility charting, and that's the key thing. Um, uh, the website iirm.org explains the concept further. Fertility charting is the key. So that's the thing. I'm just going to make that small. That's the thing you've got to look out for. There's a, an example of, a, of the fertility chart I use with Chart Neo. Uh, one of the challenges I have is the doctors who work in fertility tell me we do restorative fertility treatment already. And in truth, a lot of uh, clinics implement some restorative strategies. But what changes it is working with the fertility chart using multiple factors in a methodical, systematic way. And that's where we can get success um, uh, with very difficult cases. We continue for 12 balance cycles because remember the definition of infertility is you do not have a fertility problem unless you've been trying for a year. So if we implement a multifactorial strategy and find and fix everything, you need to give it a year um, uh, before you give up on the chance of conceiving naturally. And fertilization through restorative reproductive medicine happens through the loving embrace of the couple. Uh, different to in vitro fertilization, where it's a scientific process removed from a couple's loving embrace with IUI or IVF, for example. So with Chart Neo, we're a multiple index method. We have a combination of the ovulation method, symptothermal, symptohormonal, and we implement multiple different strategies to try and help us identify. Uh, the key signs of a woman's fertility cycle. Uh, our app is flexible and versatile. You can use as few or as many indicators as you choose, so long as we're able to accurately identify where you're ovulating. This is an example of a typical chart uh, from one of our couples. And the handy thing about this is you can see the medications that are used. We can record temperature and we can identify day of ovulation here on day 12. And that is the thing that unlocked this very difficult history for us is working with the fertility app. But it doesn't happen on its own. You got to have a fertility advisor, especially when it comes to fertility treatment or family planning. Our reception team is invaluable. And then the doctors, medical and surgical, are key to get this to work. So optimum ovulation is a new concept. I'm just going to introduce these ideas briefly because, again, this is what helped us to get our, our, our uh, treatment to work. Optimum ovulation is different than day 21. Day 21 is a threshold. If you reach this level on day 21 of your cycle for your progesterone value, you're told you're ovulating. We would insist if we time the blood test, we use a higher reference range that allows us to detect subtle hormone deficiencies that are missed by day 21 assessment. So uh, we can check the blood test anywhere between six or nine days after presumed ovulation and identify subtle hormone deficiencies that are frequently not identified with routine testing. The other key thing with our treatment that's different to many clinics is we verify complete follicle rupture by ultrasound. Many clinics will look at the follicle but very few in my clinical experience will actually confirm rupture, which is a key parameter you must have in order to get fertilization. So if you can make sure you're getting rupture and you're getting your hormones reaching our target range, then you've got a much better chance of achieving a successful pregnancy. In addition, we pay attention to the male factor, we pursue surgical assessment, and we provide ongoing emotional support throughout the process. 
It's important that the couple remember it's a relaxed, enjoyable process. Every second day, frequency of intercourse during the fertile time. And remember, stay the course for up to 12 cycles. We're halfway there, only 15 slides left. So the case report. So this couple presented to my practice in May of uh, 2019, a female age 35, trying to conceive for 16 years since July of 2002. Um, uh, they had two miscarriages naturally and one miscarriage eventually with IVF. But historically, they had two rounds of clomiphene uh, to boost the hormones. They had uh, FSH injections for five cycles and six stimulated cycles of in vitro of, of, of uh, artificial reproductive treatment, three with IVF and three with ICSI, that's uh, where you inject the sperm into the egg to get fertilization. And in total, they got to embryo transfer on eight occasions. They had one pregnancy, which ended in miscarriage, and they gave up on the process um, uh, in 2013 before they resumed it again with our practice some six years later. She was known to have polycystic ovaries, diagnosed in 2004. She had a long, irregular cycle from 45 to 33 days. Her body weight was a little elevated at 35.6 for her uh, BMI. She had a good egg reserve with an AMH of 46, which is quite typical of polycystic ovaries, and her androgens uh, were elevated uh, with DHEAS at 11.04. So, the additional factors that we found, we knew about the polycystic ovaries and underactive thyroid, but we identified significant poor follicle function um, uh, and a way to intervene to get an optimum follicle function in the way I described by ultrasound and the timed blood test. Uh, we treated her for low endorphins, which is an important part of our treatment and topic of another talk, but we treated that for her. We referred her for surgery to treat a uterine septum and she was also found through our investigations to have a balanced uh, translocation that's a chromosomal factor uh, which would mean she's going to have a higher risk of miscarriage every time because of her chromosomes even if we get everything else right there is no treatment for that uh, through restorative reproductive medicine except to say well let's fix everything else and recognize you'll have that little bit of a higher risk of miscarriage about a 30 percent incidence but still 70 percent in her favor if we get everything right so we got her to phase three, where we felt everything was balanced. She was ovulating by ultrasound uh, with good hormones, feeling good, and the surgical correction of her uterine septum. And, uh, and we continued to monitor her blood test every month, seven days after presumed ovulation. And then the hard part for us is we wait, we hope, and we pray, and we give it the time. And in her case, even though she'd been waiting for 16 years before, once we'd achieved a balanced um, preconception environment, it was her third balanced cycle. So this is uh, from uh, her Chart Neo app, and it shows the cycle of conception. She ovulated on day 13. We can see that she was having letrozole treatment at the start of her cycle, a trigger HCG to release the egg, and luteal phase HCG with progesterone to support the luteal phase. Now, as it turns out, her bloods went higher than my intention. If she wasn't pregnant for this cycle, I would have reduced the follicular stimulation with letrozole to a lower dose. So she could actually have had twins. Um, uh, thankfully, when we did the ultrasound, it was a singleton viable pregnancy. Normally we do the scan at about seven and a half weeks. This one was delayed a little bit because um, she had a history of previous losses and the hormones were looking good and uh, there was a bit of a delay. She went to uh, full term, uh, 39 weeks, and had an elective cesarean section because the, it was a breech presentation. She had a baby boy, good weight, uh, eight pounds and one ounce, and mom and baby did well. And baby was delivered this month last year. And after baby was delivered and I looked at their case, I thought, you know what? This is worth writing up and putting out in the published literature to try and explain uh, to my peers and others that there is another way um, to uh, approach fertility problems with restorative reproduction rather than trying to bypass it with uh, artificial reproductive techniques. How does this compare with restorative reproductive medicine and in vitro fertilization? When we analyze our data in detail and compare it with published studies, 12 balanced cycles of restorative reproductive medicine is comparable to having three cycles of in vitro fertilization. This is the way the live birth rates come out and um, restorative reproductive medicine comes out uh, very favorable. It's the orange bar compared to the blue bar for three consecutive uh, rounds of in vitro fertilization. 
um, and that's pub looking at our, our data that was analyzed by an independent uh, analysis in 2015, and we compared it with the published data uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, for three cycles of in vitro fertilization. Conceiving through neo-fertility um, uh, with restorative reproductive techniques, well, we've published in the past that we get a 52 0.8% uh, overall success for the entire population of people we treat. For those with failed IVF, it's roughly one couple in three, so 32.1%. And for recurrent miscarriage, uh, we get live births um, up to 80% of the time. And they're the references of um, uh, where we've published. Uh, natural conception is best um, because you get 98% uh, singleton pregnancies in our practice, so we keep twins very low which is better and safer for mom and baby and for uh, life afterwards, one at a time is better. So a high incidence of full term, normal weight, healthy babies, and also repeat successful pregnancies. This couple with their long difficult history has real potential, they, they could have another go. So there you go. Thank you for your, your time. And um, if you want to find out more, our publication, it's in the uh, Journal of Medical Case Reports, and I'll put the reference um, down below. Thank you.